Hey everyone, Captain Foley here. Welcome back for another Eagle Moss product review. Today is another special one because it's a special edition. It's also an XL ship. That's why it's a special edition. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at the NX-01. As I said, this is the special issue. So, um, so there we go. There it is on the cover. Uh, down here you got some information about it. NX Clash launched 2151 phase cannons and polarized hull plating. So nothing new. I gotta remember this is the special edition one so there's already been a magazine done for the smaller regular sized Eagle Moss. Uh, so this one will have different information in it than that one. So as we open it up of course you got the standard how to put it on the stand over there. Here we got a great shot of the ship from the front and then some specifications right down here. First appears broken bow or bow, never know which. Class NX, last seen, these are the voyages designed by Doug Drexler and Captain's Archer. Or it should be Captain by Archer, but there you go. So, this talks about first steps. Uh, Enterprise took Star Trek back to its beginnings in an attempt to offer the franchise a chance to renew itself. Um, not, not the best idea to shoehorn something in or go backwards in time. Better to go forwards, create something new, because this did mess with a little bit of canon and changed a few things, um, which I thought they'd have the opportunity to fix with the Temporal Cold War. Never really happened, unfortunately. But that being said, they did try to hold true as best they could. So, so just more information there. Um, there's Trip and Archer and a bunch of the uh, characters, um, Admiral Forrest and Saval, or not Saval, Saval's not in that picture, but anyway, yeah. <coughs> um, got the Klingons, the Zindi, T'Pol, Mr. Future Man, which could have been, again, again fantastic, never really panned out um, for what they wanted. There's Archer in his spacesuit. You got Malcolm. You got the Enterprise right there in dry dock, and one of the shuttle pods. So just the casting of Enterprise. You'll find a lot with a lot of these special editions, like the uh, special issue uh, Voyager. They would do like a cast breakdown, um, character and uh, actors. Actors. So you got Archer, T'Pol, Trip. Uh, Enshin, Enshin, Anson Hoshi uh, Sato, Malcolm Reed, Dr. Flox, um, Travis Mayweather. And then making it real. Here it says a new ship and a new time period gave the Star Trek production team the chance to reinvent everything. Again, not the best idea, uh, not the worst by any means, but not the, the greatest. Uh, you got some sketches of sick bay, um, the engineering room. I really like the engineering room in the NX-01, um, especially how it, like you can see it feeding out to each pylon. Um, that was cool. Then we got the shuttle bay. Again, a very important part of Enterprise because the shuttle pods were the main form of transportation, not so much the transporter right away. Uh, so that was great. Got the bridge, and then Sulaban, an alien lady. And uh, again, the Suliban helix or nexus or whatever it was. Um, and on the back, you got a picture of the NX-01 from the top. Great ship. Um, not my favorite Enterprise by any stretch. And not my favorite design by any stretch, but still a fantastic design. Um, and it's good to actually get to talk to Doug about these kind of things. And hear all the thought that went into this. So that's it for the magazine, guys. Um, Moving to the box, it's the standard uh, special edition box. You got the nice picture of the, the model on the front there, Enterprise NX-01. On the side, you got the standard Star Trek logo. On this side, you've got the uh, you know Voyager, TNG, Deep Space Nine, and Enterprise logos. And then just 
that's the rest of the box. So again, the box makes a great display piece on its own on a top shelf or something. You have it like this. You can put the model on top of it if you want. But if you don't have room, take the model out. You can always display the box as is. These special edition boxes um, are really fantastic for that. Great uh, photos on the covers, cover on the front, top of the box. Um, but let's get into it. So there it is, nestled all snug in its bed. And I gotta say, at first glance, it looks really good. I haven't had a chance to take this out and look at it, so I'm excited to do so. So, just get straight to it. And on first glance, everything looks great. Here it is, um, fairly good size. Hefty weight. This is actually very well weighted. Um, the saucer all feels metal. Um, the nacelles are, of course, plastic. As are the struts, I believe, yes. But the saucer itself feels all metallic. And it's a good size. So nice nice model let's take a look at it so starting at the front of course uh, we've got the little tiny deflector in there um, I actually like the way this is downsized on the Bandai model kit it's quite a bit bigger and sticks out further I like the way they did this though nice and nestled in there uh, not a lot of detail there of course though um, moving up to the registry number uh, again it looks beautiful there are there is some paneling um, some Aztec detail on the hull and uh, looks really good. looks like a nice metallic color to it. So um, now you got these black um, little squares and they are kind of offset a little bit. You can see it right in the middle here. Um, they're kind of shifted over just a tad. So the alignment, again, a little bit of an issue with the Eagle Moss, but uh, it's actually not as bad on this one as I've seen on many others, so. Now you got these details here. Um, again, nice little red and yellow markings and striping going down to the, the running lights on each side. Uh, the RCS thrusters on this look great. Uh, they're a nice right color. They're the yellow, and they got the nice red striping around them as well, so no real problems there. On the edge you can see the windows there are no um, paint issues because they aren't painted they are inset um, but they look really good um, I'm glad they didn't try to paint them and mess up the alignment on those. Um, <clears throat> bridge module again looks great you got this nice uh, blue kind of like a robin's egg blue like we see it later on the refit around there uh, and the, the gold on top just a nice overall bridge and like um, probably BC deck. It looks more like just like a B deck actually, but on the Constitution class it's called the BC deck, the two decks under the bridge. So um, obviously because it's A, B, C, or one, two, three. A, B, C, one, two, three. Huh. Sorry. <laughs> Back here you got the impulse engines. Um, they're a nice gray color. Again, look great. Here is the shuttle bay and or the shuttle bays. Not really shuttle bays, they're more like cargo bays. Or uh, this is where the warp core slides into, as uh, Doug says, in the center there. But there are two doors on each side of it uh, for cargo and um, equipment, I would assume. So those are there. Not a lot of detail in there, but for the size, it looks good. Um, can't really complain. Now if you go to the bottom of the saucer section here, again, a lot of great details. you got the same kind of yellow and red markings here, right beside the NX-01, and NX-01 on the other side as well. Same kind of aztec and paint detail uh, with the windows. Again, maybe a little bit of an alignment issue, but not too bad. Up here you've got this nice detail, um, which is centered very nicely on there, so 
they actually did a good job there. Moving back to the planetary sensor dome, it's got like this faded yellow around the ring of it, which I think looks fantastic. Uh, it's not too sharp, too crisp. It's kind of like a nice faded melded color. Um, so I think that looks really great as it is. Uh, I gotta give them kudos for that. That's a nice paint detail uh, for sure. Moving back, you got the shuttle, um, shuttle pod launch doors. Uh, there's all four of them there. Again, not a lot of detail. They aren't numbered or anything, but they do have the red markings around them, which is a nice touch. Uh, moving back to the warp sustainer crystal. Um, this is not an impulse crystal like it is on the refit. This is called the warp sustainer crystal. Uh, it's to sustain warp speed once they get to the speed, right? So that module is actually quite detailed and very nice in its appearance uh, from the front as well as the back. Lots of great detail. On the bottom, you've got some different coloring and painting on it. Again, looks super fantastic. Um, this is just, it's such a nice sized model. Uh, the details really shine through on this. So, um, the pontoons or the, um, whatever you want to call them, the struts, um, Again, have a little bit of Aztecing, not as much as the saucer, but there is markings all the way up on the outer, on the upper facing saucer, as well as the black markings as well. So some great detail right in there. Flip them over, they got the same thing on the other side as well. They're lacking the silver detailing at the front of the strut, like it is on top, but the, the black markings on the back are the same. Then the cells are really, really, really nice on this. Um, again, you hold it up to the light, the way the light shines through, they look like they're glowing, the blue elements. Um, probably some of the best done nacelles I've seen from Eagle Moss. Um, same with the, uh, the Bizarre Collectors. In the lo proper lighting, they just glow really nicely. Uh, so a lot of nice detail there. Um, front and back of the nacelle, lots of fantastic detail. Um, just looks really nice. The, the, the nacelles on this are amazing. This is probably one of the nicest special editions ships I've seen. Uh, I was reluctant to get this. I didn't want to order it at first, um, but finally decided I should because I've reviewed a lot of the other ones. And uh, this is the first of the Enterprises, so it's one that needs to be in the collection. So overall, it's a great piece. Um, you've got these details here, which I forget what they are. We've done videos on this ship with Doug, many videos. So go check them out. Just type in Trek Yards um, NX-01 Doug Drexler into the YouTube search engine. You'll find a bunch of videos. Go watch them. They're very informative, and Doug is a fun guy. So but yeah, they got this detail here. and So overall, um, just a lot of nice paint details. Uh, looks great as a cohesive piece. The running lights on the back of the nacelles, again, are painted really nicely. So are the ones on the saucer. So those really kind of bring this piece together. Um, just because the detail is so nice on it. Um, same with the bottom. There's no real complaints. The misalignment issues are very minimal on this. Um, they're even... <laughs> I wouldn't say non-existent, but it's damn close. Uh, way better than a lot of the other ones that they've done, so. But there it is, guys, and it's a great size, as you can see. It's bigger than my hand, bigger than my face. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing this, it's, it's really weird. But anyway, so it is time now to head on over to the stand over there, check it out on the stand, finish up this video, and uh, call it a wrap. So let's head on over. Warp 5, because this is like a Warp 5 ship. That's all a big deal and stuff. <sighs> Alright guys, this one's being filmed a little bit later in the day, so you get the sun shining in on the model, which for this one is great, because you can really see those details pop on this thing. It's just, it's such a great piece. You can see the nacelles glowing. The bizarres look like they're shining. Looks great with the sun on it. And of course,
course the stand nestles in nice there and it's fine because a little bit lack of detail that was back there is covered up but overall great looking little ship so uh, and it's the same thing on a lower shelf this looks great on a low shelf the the top view of this thing is really nice um, so you can't really go wrong with it having not having it on a lower shelf like at all um, <clears throat> on eye level shelf. I'm not a fan of this ship from the side. I'm just not. It's, it's missing something. Some angles it looks really great like that or that. Oh. Careful with the stand. It's not as it doesn't slot in there super great. Um, it's not snug fit. So if you're wiggling it around it will pop off. Um, so be conscious of that. Be mindful of it. But yeah, on an eye level shelf you get some nice views of it if you're into that kind of thing. And then if you put it up high, again, some really nice views of it, especially with the sun behind it. That looks really nice. <laughs> but, so yeah, it looks great on a bunch of different shelves, adjust shelf heights. Um, definitely a good one to add to your XL collection. Um, uh, and guys, the, the XLs, the special editions, or the special issues, are, aren't available for our discount, unfortunately. Uh, but if you want to go to the Eagle Moss site, click the link down below. Head on over there, pick up a bunch of stuff, throw it in your cart. Um, the discount code will apply to some of it, not all of it. Uh, the XLs, unfortunately, are exempt as our shop exclusives. But the regular ones, if you use the discount code TREKYARDS at checkout, you'll save yourself some money and it helps out the channel and it helps you guys out as well. So please, please by all means, go do that. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend this one. It is a stunning model. Like I said, one of the best uh, XL ones that I've seen. Uh, I do love the way those cells glow. They look really good. So anyway, guys, please like the video, subscribe to the channels, and uh, don't forget to check out other videos by us as well. So until next time, guys, I'm Captain Foley. See you in the future. Bye-bye.